بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين to all brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we come to another session of the themes of the Quran and last week we discussed about the Makkan mindset and we discussed in there how Allah Azza wa uses so many different things to try and prepare the mind first before he prepares the person for actions and for Iman. See, Iman and belief that we have is something that is the most valuable thing we have. But that Iman has got a, has got a basis. It needs a basis. And the basis of Iman has to be that a person knows what, they, what they're believing in. So that's why the, uh, the Quran says in Surah Muhammad, it says, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ it says, know that there is no other deity, no other God except Allah Azza wa Jal. So that, that ayah, which is uh, in Surah number 47, it's not really proper belief. So in the past few sessions, we've been discussing that Allah Azza wa Jal has made the Sahaba radiallahu anhum know what, what it is that they're believing in. Now, the next, the, one of the things I said to you last week at the end is, Allah Azza wa uses repetition in the Quran in very different ways so that the, the, the reminder uh, of Allah Azza wa can be done again and again. And the reason why is because when the repetition is done, the repetition creates an anchoring. Now what's anchoring? Anchoring means that you're going deeper and deeper and deeper. Just like you have a ship and if you want to uh, you know, station the ship, they will pull out the anchor and they will throw it off board and the weight of the anchor then stops the ship from moving. Okay? The same way, the, the Iman has got a weight and repetition of thinking of Allah, repetition of the Dalail and the evidences, repetition of, uh, you know, let's say the stories of the past, Repetition of Allah Azza wa saying that he's the most powerful, he's the most knowledgeable one, he's the one that knows everything, that does you know, whatever he wants. The repetition of that again and again and again gives my Iman a weight. Okay? It, it gives it a heavier weight. And the more I repeat these things, the more I have my awareness, my understanding my, you know, m my mind is open to it when I'm listening to this, the more it will anchor, or the more it will get heavier and heavier, and therefore my Iman becomes firm and even more firm and becomes really, really firm with the repetition of all of this. Now, there's a reason why I'm saying this, brothers uh, and sisters who are listening. Uh, in this day and age, you know, these, these are the ends of, uh, uh, you know, we're at the ends of time. And the end of time, one of the things that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us is that how quickly people will lose iman. Okay, one of the signs of the last time of the last hour is that people will lose the iman quickly. Yusbihu mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran. A person will come, you know, will become a Muslim in the morning, and by evening they they've left the iman. The ev by evening they're finished. Okay. And these are the times, and, and if you want to know, the truth is that there are many people out there who are born Muslim, but they have got no connection, not real any connection with, with Islam. Okay, they've got a Muslim name, but if you don't have these concepts and these things coming into your mind, if they don't actually make you connected with Allah Azza wa Jal, if you don't understand what Iman is, if you don't go over these ayats and over these ahadith, then what happens is Iman becomes lighter and lighter and lighter until it is ready to fly away from you. And that is why we have so many people leaving Islam. Why? Because those people, let me just make it clear to you, those people who have left Islam had a shallow Iman. And those people who find it very difficult to leave Iman They've got true Iman. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, um, he, said uh, he gave us the, you know, in one hadith, he, he said that there are three categories of people 
uh, and these categories of people, they, these three categories, they have truly tasted the sweetness of Iman. And one of those categories in Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said that a man would rather be thrown into fire than to reject his Iman. When a person gets to that stage, when if somebody came up to me and said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, you know, uh, again, I'm saying, look, if you're under duress, if somebody forces you to give up your Iman, uh, you can, you know, the Quran says that you can actually at that time say that you don't believe when you actually do believe. Okay? That's just to save yourself from trouble. So let me just give you the verse before people kind of think that they all want to jump in fire. Okay? <laughs> or they all want to get shot dead. So let me give you, give you that first and then we'll carry on with that conversation. Um, so in, the, in Surah An-Nahl, Surah number 16, uh, Ayah number, Surah 16, Ayah number 106, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Man kafara billahi min ba'd imani, whoever will display any form of disbelief after they believe, uh, then Allah will be angry with them, except, he says, Man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutmain, except the one who has been forced, put under real coercion, under duress, uh, and, and been told that, you know, like something like, do you believe in, in, in Allah? And Allah says, wa qalbuhu mutmain, his heart or her heart is firm in iman, they, they really know that they believe in Allah, but at that time they say they don't believe in Allah just to save themselves from the torture, that is fine, Allah has said in the Holy Quran. But we're not talking about that situation. We're talking about somebody who actually, you know, mentally they think, well, you know what, if it came to it that, and somebody wanted to actually throw me in, in the fire because they know I'm a believer, I'm not going to be a person who's going to um, start, you know, panicking at that time and say, no, 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 you know, uh, and, and saying I reject faith. No. You know what, if, if it comes to it, then it comes to it. If it comes to me dying because of my iman, I die because of my iman. That is someone who's tasted the sweetness of iman. But that is someone who has worked on the Iman and the Iman has become very heavy. Okay, that's an anchoring Iman, which is very heavy, which you have tasted the sweetness and your Iman will not fly away from you easily. Now, again, I need to say this uh, because a lot of brothers and sisters do come again and again and they say these things, okay? One thing that brothers and sisters say is that, you know, uh, people come across doubts, okay? They come across doubts. And, and I'll be honest with you, 99% of believers will at some point come across some form of something that might, you know, push them towards doubts. So let me do a quick test here. Um, if you've never had a doubt about Allah, about His Messenger, about the truth of Islam, about the Quran, about the Akhirah, about the fact that you might wake up and it might not be the right religion that you followed, if you never ever had any of this ever come into your mind, ever in your life, not even once, put your hands up. Okay, again, see, there's about two or three people put their hands up, right? The rest of us here, a good sort of, I'd say, a good 40 sort of people, um, including others that might be sitting at the back there. Um, we are not putting our hands up. Now, is there anything wrong with you? No. There's nothing wrong with you. Even I have, at some point, faced that. You know, once I was really ill, and I, I don't know why, because what happens is when, you know, just as I said to you, the, the ship has put its anchor down. And sometimes you could have a heavy anchor, and even then you could face some kind of turmoil. Why? Because when the seas are surging, and when you've got a storm brewing up, uh, then even though you've got the anchor down, sometimes the ship can, can move a bit, okay, because of the sea that is now... Uh, you know, surging and, and, and it's got high winds and it happens sometimes, okay? Once I was really ill and I don't know for what reason, just for a few moments, you know, something inside me said, why is this happening to you? Now, I was ill for many months at one point in my life and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to even move because I had, a, I had a problem with my hip joint. And at that time, you know, when you're at the weakest point, it is true, you know, that's, that's the time shaitan can get to you. And I was thinking to myself, hang on a minute, what is happening? Why am I hearing these things in my head? Because I preach against this, and I've told people not to do this. But even in my mind, somewhere it said, well, if you've been good all these years, and you've been praying, then why did this happen to you? 
And guys, I want to tell you, it comes into your mind sometimes that that's shaitan, finished, big, big time. Hey, you've got to recognize that. That's shaitan. And the, the thing is, it's not, look, you don't become a weak believer because you got waswasa. No, this is the, this is the big, uh, um, you know, th this is the big lie that you tell yourself. See, Muslims, when they, when they have some kind of waswasa, some kind of whispering of the shaitan, they kind of think to themselves, oh no, I must be a weak believer. No, you are the strong believer. Why? Because when the Sahaba radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they said, this is, this is according to hadith of Muslim, they said, Messenger of Allah, we experience certain thoughts in our minds that for, for us to, e to be even burned, just completely burned to ashes, we'd rather have that than to utter these things from our mouths of what, what came into our minds. We'd rather be burned than tell you what came in our minds. So the Prophet ﷺ then asked him the question. He didn't say, tell me your doubts, tell me what did, you, what did you think of. He said, did you find yourselves fighting those doubts and those whisperings? And they said, of course, Messenger of Allah. We were fighting them in our minds. You know, how come this is coming in my mind? You know, no, 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 I don't, I don't believe in that. No, no, no. You know, they're fighting those, those whisperings. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, ذَلِكَ مَحْضُ iman." That is pure 100% Iman. The fact that you fight these thoughts is a sign that you're a true believer. The fact that you had waswasa and some whispering came into your mind somewhere at some point in your life is actually in one way a good sign. Why? Because one of the uh, early salaf, one of the early predecessors, he said a wonderful thing. He said, a thief only goes to a house where there are valuables. You don't go to an empty house to steal. Did you guys understand? Right? So the fact that shaitan came to you means that you've got iman. He's got something to steal. If you've got nothing to steal, then he should, you know, he's not even bothered with you. Just like all those other Muslims out there who don't practice Islam, they don't get doubts. They're like, yo, you know, thug life, you know, let's enjoy it, man. They don't get no doubts. Why? Because there's nothing to steal inside them. But you and me, we are working for our Iman. We've got something valuable there. We're treasuring it. So shaitan wants to come and steal it. That's why he will look for one way or another way to try and make us doubtful of what we've got inside us. Okay? So it's a good sign you've got that now. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu experienced that. They experienced waswasa. They experienced whisperings. This was a natural thing that, they, that happened. Okay, so don't be, you know, shaken by that. But what we, me and you need to, you know, do is we need to make the, the, that iman heavier and heavier and heavier, so heavy that those whisperings don't even make any difference to us or those whisperings don't even come to us. You know, if you ever get whisperings, one brilliant way of getting rid of whisperings is, you know, and, and if you try this, subhanAllah, it's a brilliant way of you getting rid, rid of any waswasa of shaitan. You know, sometimes you have these doubts occurring in, in, in you. Brilliant way, which is, as soon as you get the whispering coming inside you, and they say, you know, why, wh wh what about this, why this, why that? Okay? What you do is straight away start to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Just say, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And to the whispering, say, jazakallah ya shaitan. Shaitan, may Allah reward you, yeah? You've just made me want to remember my Allah. Okay, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Now the whispering is still going on. Hey, 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 do you believe in this? La ilaha illallah, thank you very much. La ilaha, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Thank you, thank you. You're good, good, you're good. Okay, just kind of do the dhikr. Now what's going to happen is the second time he comes and does the same whisperings in you, Okay, again, la ilaha illallah, oh, thank you, man, you're, you're my man, you know, get me, you're my, you're my man, you reminded me, thank you very much, may Allah reward you, make you Muslim as well. So, you carry on remembering Allah, remember Allah, remember Allah, you know what will happen? I can guarantee you, after a few times, those waswasas will, sh will stop, because shaitan thinks, man, I can not do injection to him, yeah, forget that, he turns the needle around and he injects me. All right, so instead of me attacking him, he attacks me with my own gun. So I'm not going to do that anymore. And, and seriously, I've said this to a lot of people. Whoever's used this has not come back to me and said it doesn't work. 
So just remember Allah Azza wa Now, why does Iman quiver? Why does Iman, you know, why, why are people sometimes feeling that they want to leave Islam or they want to stop practicing? Some people might not want to leave Islam, but some of our brothers and sisters we know, they come and pray with us for five years. They pray with us for 10 years. And after a while, you slowly, 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 slowly see them drifting. Now, there are many reasons why people will stop, you know, practicing Islam. But there should be no excuse to stop practicing Islam or to feel that my Iman is something which I don't, you know, my Iman is something which um, I don't need to bother with anymore or my practice. There should be no reason for that. That my Iman is getting weak because of this ban in my life, because of this situation I have, because of my financial crisis, because of my work crisis, whatever the reason might be. Some people go through many different tests. Look, tests are going to come all the time. There is no man, no woman without a test. But if you, at that moment of test, link that problem with your Iman in a negative way, then you have just fallen into the trap of shaitan. So you know what I said to you earlier, that I was in an illness and, uh, you know, I was ill for many months and suddenly I hear these voices saying to me, you know, if you've been good and if you've believed in Allah and if you've been done all this good, then why did this happen to you? Why would this happen to you then? You know, that is, that is a negative way of linking it to your Iman. You're doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to do is, I'm in a problem, and Alhamdulillah, I've got Iman, and now I'm going to use that Iman to get myself out of a trouble. Now, the, the, second, the second part of the shaitan, what he does is, that let's say you use your Iman to get out of trouble. First is he, he, tries you, he tries for you not to get into the pathway of Allah. Okay, so the first waswasa he gives, he says to you, he says, you know, oh, all these years you've been turning away from Allah, now you've got a problem, you're going to go to Allah, you hypocrite, you hypocrite, you mug, what are you going to do? You're going to start worshipping Allah because you've got a problem? So first thing is he tries to stop you coming into it. Second is if you decide that, no, I'm going to use my Iman to get myself out of, out of trouble, we all know that most people will come to pray, but your trouble's not going to go straight away. We all know this. Because this is the beautiful way of Allah making your Iman go even stronger. How? If me and you had a problem, and every time we had a problem, we came and we prayed to Allah, Azza wa Jalla, and Allah took our problem away, straight away, where would, what, what would we do? Come on, let's be honest. We would go, we would go away. Yeah, thanks Allah, thanks. We love you Allah. <laughs> back, to, back to business again. Okay? Back to business again. That's what happened to Fir'aun. Fir'aun, when he had a problem, and like the water turned to blood, and everyone's water turned to blood, he went to Musa, and he said, Musa, لَإِنْ كَشَفْتَ عَنَّا الرِّجْزِ he said, if you can just go and ud'u lana rabba, go and call your Lord. And if you can take away this problem of ours, la nursi lana ma'aka bani Israel. We're going to release the, you know, the, the, the slaves of bani Israel. Right now, we'll give them to you and we'll stop whatever we do, we're doing wrong. So Musa Al-Sam turned to Allah, the problem went away, and straight away Firaun went back to business. And then the locusts came. When the locusts came, again, Firaun turns to Musa Al-Sam. He says, go on, please, go and ask Allah. For, 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 for a, a you know, relief. Please, we'll, we'll, we'll do everything you say. And when Musa Alayhi prayed and the locusts went away, he went back to, back, back to the same thing again. The point is, if Allah Azza wa takes that problem away from you, you're going to go back to business again. So therefore, he prolongs the problem. Just to see who's there for, for, the, for real and who's there because they're just there just to get rid of their problem. The people who are there for Allah, it doesn't matter whether your problem is with you for a lifetime. And that's real Iman. Now some people might get frightful, oh my God, I've got to come and believe in Allah and He doesn't even do anything about my problems. No, you're going to get a lot of good things coming your way if you come towards Iman. But He doesn't have to sort out every single problem that He wants to. Anyway, my point is why do people, why do people, you know, wither and why do they go away from, from Iman at, that, at the moment of trouble? or when something's gone wrong. Or sometimes, subhanAllah, some people get extra money, extra gift from Allah, and that makes them go away from, from Islam. Why? Because they never worked on the Iman. 
The Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in, they had many different parts of their, you know, their faculties, their understanding that was always working on Iman. And one of the biggest things was that the more reminder you give yourself about Allah Azza wa Jal, the heavier your Iman becomes. So when the turbulent times comes, when the turbulent time comes, that's when your Iman is going to be less likely to be shaken and to start to wither in the wind. So that's what we need to do. So Allah Azza wa Jal has given us various ways to make that Iman become stronger. And one of the one of the crucial things that I said to you from that from that ayah in Surah Muhammad is the ilm and the knowledge is needed with Iman. Blind following of faith doesn't make your Iman any stronger. Okay? The more you can secure it with, you know, some and it's a really good thing to do. I'm gonna ask you all you brothers and sisters to do this, which is go to a course at some point in your life if you can. You know, through maybe, you know, uh, dealing with uh, a, a course that deals with the doubts that we might get. Go to a course that deals with how to make Iman stronger. But by saying this, I want to add one thing. Recently, and probably for the last few hundred years, I don't know, there's been, been a, a great, you know, great thing that people think that Aqidah is something, okay, Aqidah is something that if you cover a course in Aqidah, if you if you cover you know some some books and some courses and go and, go and do some discourse whatever in aqidah then your iman is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger it is true however there is a problem that has occurred in the last few hundred years with this whole concept of aqidah what is aqidah aqidah is a set of dogma it's a set of beliefs our tenets our faith things that are to do with believing in Allah, believing in the messenger, believing in the, the angels, believing in the books, believing in the akhirah, believing in qadr and so on. All these things related to all these, all these things and you know, uh, staying away from deviancy, going towards the truth, how to become a proper Muslim, what kind of beliefs to have, what beliefs makes you a proper Muslim, what beliefs makes you a, you know, a, a Muslim that leaves the faith or a Muslim that is you know, on the verge of leaving the faith. All these things are good to study and we need to study them. But one mistake and one big problem that has happened with these Aqidah courses is they have become courses of knowledge but not of faith. Now let me repeat this, they become courses of knowledge. So they give you like 10 things to believe about Allah, 7 things to believe about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 3 things to believe about your Iman, 4 things to believe here. And these become parts of knowledge, but what happens is your actual Iman doesn't increase, your Iman doesn't become weightier. Why? Because you're not relating the Aqidah to real life. When the Qur'an, see in the whole Qur'an, you will find that Allah Azza wa Jal has talked about Iman. Okay? And when he talks about Iman, he links it with actions. It's a practical world where your knowledge and your aqidah and your beliefs in the real world, they join together and it turns into some practice, some form of practice. That is what real Iman should be. So what has happened with these courses? is that they will teach you all these things. For example, they will teach you, okay, you know, one of the things about Iman is that um, you depend on Allah Azza wa We depend on Allah, we do tawakkul on Allah. And, and they'll tell you a whole hour or half an hour about tawakkul. And they'll give you ayahs from the Quran. And they'll give you ahadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to explain what tawakkul is and how you depend on Allah. And it's beautiful to listen to all of that. But that is just the beginning part. What's supposed to happen is when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi taught about tawakkul and he taught about sabr, there was a real life going on where he made sure that they did their tawakkul and they depended on Allah in the crisis that they were in. That they showed their sabr and they showed their patience in the midst of the problem that they had. So it wasn't just knowledge, it was in a real life where all of these things were happening. Do you guys, do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? Right? So for example, they had the Battle of Uhud. And the Battle of Uhud, they, they, they had losses. They had a lot of losses. And at that moment, if you look in Surah Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran has the story of Uhud in it. 
So Surah Ali Imran, see, the, the beautiful thing about it is the, the, the seerah, if you study seerah, then you'll only study what happened at that point of the Prophet's life. Okay, so you study about seerah. You study about, you know, the, the Battle of Uhud. So if you go into um, Surah um, Ali Imran, what you'll find is you'll find that Allah talks about what happened to the Sahaba when they left the Prophet ﷺ, what happened to the Prophet ﷺ when he got wounded and other Sahaba. You know, there's a whole battle. I'm not going to go through that. But what I want to say to you is the Quran, subhanAllah, when the Quran deals with it, it will give you everything in one go. It will throw to you a lot of things at one time. It's not just giving you a story. No way. If you look there, it, it, it is making you think. So for example, when he talks about battle of Uhud and the loss that they're making, just listen to this. Allah Azza wa Jal, he's talking about the story and he says, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ If you have, have faced um, a tragedy in the battlefield and you, trace, you, you face some, some you, you've been wounded, then the other nation has also been wounded. And we're going to, we're going to exchange these days between yourselves. Like sometimes you'll win and sometimes you'll lose. And then it says, The reason why the tragedy happened is so that Allah can make it clear who the true believers are. And so that he can take from you certain uh, martyrs, he can create certain martyrs from am among you. Wallahu la zalimin, and Allah Azza wa doesn't like those who are cruel or who oppress. amanu, and so that Allah Azza wa can clear the hearts of the believers. al kafirin, and and you know he can deal with the with the, with the disbelievers in a certain way. Now, all of this in Surah number three, Ayah number one four zero one four one. Now, what you can see is the story is being told. But many reasons are being given. Those same reasons the believers are now taking in and thinking, wow, Allah wanted to test my iman. Allah wanted to make me, make my brother who died a shaheed. Allah wanted to make sure that he makes me understand that today I might win and tomorrow I might lose, but I shouldn't lose my iman. Okay, so there's many different lessons that are being, be, being given. Then he talks about, for example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. you know, the fact that, you know, some, some of them tried to flee from the battlefield. Uh, because they thought that he was, he was, you know, he had passed away in, in, in mid-battle. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, now look how, how he puts the ayah, because there's many things that are thrown at the believers to absorb and to take in. Allah says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad is no one but a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهُ الرُّسُلُ Many messengers have gone before him, meaning that he's a messenger, yes, but many messengers came before him, and they also passed away, so he's going to pass away. What about if he does pass away? What about if he becomes a shaheed and he becomes a martyr? You're going to just turn on your, on your heels and you're going to turn your backs on Islam because the Prophet you know, died in battle? Well, if you decide to turn your heels, turn, turn back on your heels and turn away from, from the deen, such a person will never cause any harm to Allah, never cause the least harm to Allah. Now look how much is being thrown that if something happens that is bad, are you going to now turn away because of the conflict that was there? Look how much, look, look at the Iman. The Iman is not just knowing that the Seerah happened, no. The Iman is not knowing, look, the, the next part of the verse is, وَسَيَدْ زِلَّهُ shakirin. Allah will reward those who show gratitude. The Iman is not sitting in a lesson, sitting in a class and saying, oh, we've got to do shukr of Allah. We've got to, you know, thank Allah. That's Aqeedah. Aqeedah tells you to do shukr of Allah. Aqeedah tells you to believe in Allah. Seerah will tell you um, to, to know about the story of Uhud. Okay, there's two different departments. But the, the way Allah did the tarbiyah and he molded the Sahaba was with many different elements all around. Each of these verses came down and the verses told them how to act and how to behave. So if you look at the end of Ali Imran, the last verse, verse number 200, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you believe, Isbiru. Have patience. Sabiru. Tell others to be patient. Rabitu. You know, make your, tie yourselves to Iman. Make yourselves strong. Wattakullah. La'allakum tuflihun. 
and have the awareness and the consciousness of Allah so that you may get to success. Now Allah said what? After the entire story, after so many verses, Allah says, Ismiru, you know, have patience. You know, you lost, so what? Have patience, show patience now. So I want to say this to you brothers and sisters right now, and this includes obviously all of us, including me, that real sabr, real tawakkul, real something, you know, of aqidah that you learn cannot ever be a thing that is detached from my real life. And that is the problem that a lot of Muslims have, have faced. Because Muslims lead their lives, the aqidah is in books. The aqidah is somewhere in the knowledge of the brain. But it hasn't been absorbed in the heart, and it hasn't manifested in the, in the limbs, and it hasn't become something that they're able to deal with with real life. So, and, and that is real Iman, and that is what Allah Azza wa wants us to do. And that was the way that the Sahaba dealt with, you know, with Iman, and they became the individuals that they became. If you're wondering today why, why, why are Muslims like, like the way they are today? And why are they so shallow? Because we've, we've separated all these departments. So, when it comes to my social life, it's separate from my Iman. And the Quran says your social life is not separate from your Iman. When it comes to my dealings and my mu'amalat and I'm dealing with money, I sometimes think, well, it's all right for me to quickly do, do this deal. It doesn't matter how that's separate from me being a believer. And the moment you do that, what you're doing is you're, you're actually um, affecting your iman because iman is directly linked to all of this. When a person lies, he, your iman is affected. When a person commits zina, your iman is affected. The hadith is clear. A man is with a woman and both, you know, they're, they're, they're sleeping together and they're haram for each other. Both the iman hovers above them. Okay? Both the iman exits the body, hovers above them, the hadith of Muslim, until they finish the act that they're doing and then the iman will come back into the bodies. Why? Because you're doing an act all your actions are linked directly to your Iman. If you do a good action, it boosts your Iman. If you do a bad action, it makes your Iman go weaker and it makes it, you know, it, 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 it's almost like, it's, uh, let me give an example, it's almost like um, if you had honey, if you had pure honey, you wouldn't put any other item in that honey. You wouldn't put butter in that honey. You wouldn't put oil in that honey. You wouldn't put crumbs of bread in that honey. You wouldn't because you spoil the honey. The honey is pure. So you take a spoon and you take the honey out and you separate it to another different plate. And each time you want to take the honey, you take it with a, with a spoon that is not affected by any other thing. Why? Because it's pure. The moment you do some bad action, it has affected your Iman. But you know, all is not lost. You can always, you know, regain your Iman again by doing the right action. Now I'm going to give you a set of verses from the Quran that tells us that all of these things are linked to our Iman. Okay, so Allah Azza gave them many verses in, in Medina Munawwara. So they had spent 13 years in Makkah. And Allah Azza wa from, from what I said to you last week, there was a Makkah mindset that Allah Azza wa created. And that, that gave them the anchoring of their faith. And then when they came to Medina, that Iman was ready to manifest in all parts of their lives. When Allah would, would tell them then that, get up and do this, get up and do that, they were ready. Because their Iman was linked to all these actions. And the, the driving engine was strong. When you've got the driving engine strong, then it's ready to do anything. So let me give you another example before I, before I continue. If, you're, if you believe in something, really, you know, if you believe in something deeply, the, the, the greater your belief is, the more you will work for it. The more you will try and, try, try and achieve that thing. So to give you a quick example, if you believe that, let's say for example, the, the, the winter holidays are here right now, okay? the winter holidays and there's the Christmas period that is coming. And at Christmas period, you know that you're in a job and you know, your colleagues are all taking time off on the 24th December, 25th, 26th, 27th, they're taking time off. So the company wants to kind of running and tells you that whoever wants to work, we're going to give you three times the pay for those days. Three times the pay. Now, if your belief is that, yes, I'm going to get three times the pay. If you believe that, yes, my, my employer is going to pay me, 
you're going to make sure that when those times come, you're going you're gonna to shift everything else out of the way and you're going to make sure that on the 25th, 26th, whatever, you're there and you want to work and you want to get three times the pay, four times the pay. Your belief is that I'm going to work normal hours, but I'm going to get extra four times the pay. Why did you work when nobody else is working? It's because of your belief that at the end of the month, when my paycheck comes at the end of December, it's going to be a good paycheck that I'm going to receive. And I'm going to enjoy having that extra funds and extra monies in my, in my, in my account. Now, that, that, that action that you did during that period is because you had the belief. If the belief wasn't there, if you believe that, you know what, my employer is just saying it. If that was in your heart, my employer is just saying it. When I do the hard work, he's going to turn around and he's going to say, nah, I'm not going to honor it. I'm not going to give you triple the pay. I'm just going to give you a little bit more than what you normally get, but I'm not going to give you the full pay. Now, the less your belief is in that thing, the less you will work. Now, imagine this. The same period comes. The same period comes, and we know that this does happen. Okay? We know that uh, end of the year, the, the, uh, the boss sometimes you know, is looking to give a, a, an extra amount of a bonus pay to somebody in the organization. Okay? So the board's going to sit, and they're going to look at all these different employees. They're going to measure you from throughout the year. And especially during that Christmas period, they're going to look at who worked the hardest. And depending on all the, all the whole year, and especially towards the end of the year, they're going to give a £20,000 bonus. £20,000 bonus. And you know, Edward got it last year, and Mary got it the other year, OK? And I'm Abdul. Okay, and I'm looking at getting this this year. And if your belief is that if you work hard throughout the year, that they're going to, they might give it to you, then you will work hard for it. And if you receive the twenty thousand pounds, then you will give yourself a good pat on the back. Why? Because you worked hard for it. It's only because your belief is there. And there are many people in in, in organisations that they receive these bonuses. Now, with iman, the same thing happens. If the Iman says, oh, I'll just do this and I might get, I might get Jannah. I might get to get those gardens Allah's talking about. Then your Iman is kind of, you know, weak. If you think that, oh, yeah, I'll come to Salah, but yeah, Allah might be happy with me, might like me, then you're not going to be wanting to do it, seriously. You've got to have, and I've got to have the belief that, you know what? I'm going to do this and exactly what the Quran says and exactly what the Hadith says, that's what I'm getting. That's the deal. Why not? Why should we not believe in that? Why have we got a whole community, have we got a whole ummah today who kind of, you know, looks at this and thinks, yeah, the Sahaba got it, but we might get it, we might not get it. Why, why, is, why is the belief so weak? That, that we have, we have ayats in front of us that tell us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. If you do this, then this is going to happen. And we kind of think, yeah, I've done it, but that might not happen to me. Why not? The Sahaba, when they received these verses, they had that belief that if I do this, then this is going to happen. And that's how Allah Azza wa made it happen. And that's part of belief. That if your belief is strong, you do it, and you have full faith that Allah Azza wa is going to do those things for you. So I'm going to give you a number of verses of how Allah Azza wa made their minds, their iman come together. And I, and I want to say this before I say these verses to you. That do you know that, subhanAllah al uh, you should know that the place of iman in the body is where? Heart. Is in the heart. heart. When we start to believe, we believe by knowing our belief that is in the brain. We start to function the brain as you know, our, our cognitive skills. We start to think about you know, what Iman is. Eventually, when we believe, the belief is stored where? In the heart. Okay? Rasulullah said that there's a part in our bodies, saluhat saluhal jasadu kullu. When that part of the body is rectified, then the whole body is rectified. When that part of the body is corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. He said, ala wa al qalb. That part of your body is your heart. Okay? Iman is stored in the heart. If Iman is in the heart and I look after it, then my whole body will be intact. When my Iman is corrupted, my whole body will be corrupted. Like I will start doing things I'm not supposed to do. 
When a person believes in their heart that, oh, if I steal a little bit, it's okay. The whole body got corrupted because the Iman was corrupted. The Iman had a wrong belief that it's okay to steal for a little while. It's okay to cheat for a little while. When that happens, then the whole body gets corrupted because the person has got the wrong sort of, sort of you know, wrong amount of, or some, some, some wrong tuning of the Iman in his heart. And because of that, the hands and the feet will start to do something wrong. And the other thing that I want to say to you is, even though Iman is stored in the heart, there is always a connection with the brain. Iman has got a connection with the brain as well. So sometimes we use our brains to think, but it's also making our Iman get stronger. Iman is stored in the heart, but it has a clear connection with the brain. Sometimes in our minds, we are using our, our thinking faculties for Iman, and sometimes we use our belief for Iman, and we are using both, both, and it moves from here to here, and this is known as Qalb. You know, Qalb, qalb in Arabic, mean, you know, we say Qalb means heart, but Qalb actually in Arabic is something that changes, it switches, it changes. Because of our heart, our heart is always, and our mind is always changing. Changing from you know, a good mood to a bad mood. It's changing from being happy to being sad. It's changing from wanting to do something to wanting to just sit down. It's always changing. The mindset is always changing. Because of that, this is called Qalb. But the passageway of Qalb is from the heart to the mind. It's, Iman is stored in the heart, but it always has a part to the, to the mind. And that's why you will find certain verses in the Qur'an that tell us that what's the matter with you? Why don't you believe? And then he tells us so that you can think. Because if you think properly, you can always affect your Iman as well. If you think properly, if you think about the right thing, you can, you can affect your Iman. And a lot of times, sometimes Allah addresses the heart and sometimes He addresses the, 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 the brain and tells us to either think or to believe. Now, modern... Um, science has now found okay this is all coming in the in the modern this is literally in the last maybe couple of years they're actually finding now that there is a real connection between the heart and between the brain and that they do consult one another there are two parts to our bodies and that when a person has belief it actually, it actually makes certain connections in the brain come alive because of the belief. There is a true connection between our heart and our brain. And what we must understand is, although Iman is sitting here in the, in the heart, Iman is not you know, disconnected from our, 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 our brain. We use our faculties up here to, to believe. Now let me give you those verses. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, for example, just to make us be, just to make us come further deeper into Islam, He says in Surah Surah Baqarah, Ayah number two zero eight, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, udhulu fi silmi kafa, enter into this religion fully. Now just because we've entered in the religion doesn't make us, you know, the deepest of believers. The deeper you go into faith, the more you go into it, the more of a person you are who's actually in that land of belief. Let me give you an example of this, okay? Many of us have uh, traveled, let's say for example, you are, you are going to Pakistan from, from London, okay? From London you're making a journey to Pakistan. En route, you, your, plan, your, your, your plane lands in Dubai, okay? So you're gonna change planes, so you go from one plane to another plane and the second plane takes you all the way to Pakistan. Right? So you've actually landed in Dubai, yes or no? You've landed in Dubai, yes or no? Yes or no? Come on, guys. Yes, you've landed in Dubai. Now, if you claim to people and said, oh, I went to Dubai, I went to Dubai, would you really say to them that they went to Dubai? Would you, come on, come on. would you say, no, you're, you're shaking your heads. You wouldn't, you say, oh man, you just, you just went from one plane to another plane. Yes, you were in Dubai, but you just, you know, took the air of Dubai in. You went in the airport of Dubai, and that's not called being in Dubai, okay? If you checked out from the airport, and you exited the airport, 
and you went into, let's say, you know, the, the space outside of Dubai, just, uh, just uh, you know, maybe the, the courtyard, maybe the few malls or whatever shops there, just outside. Okay, you've now entered Dubai. Let's say, okay, you went to Dubai. But let's just say you still never went into the heart of Dubai. You never went around in Dubai. You just went for a couple of hours here. That's not called going to Dubai. We, we know that, right? That's like having a little, you know, okay, fine, you went to Dubai, but you never really went to Dubai, okay? Right? You've got to spend a few days there. You've got to go in there. You've got to go to the certain places that we all know, the, the, the whatever place. Okay, I'm not going to give you the place names because somebody might say, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah, you just said Jumeirah. Astaghfirullah, okay, <laughs> right? So we all know that if you want to be considered to be someone who's gone into Dubai and visited Dubai, you've got to go around a bit, okay? Then you can say, yes, I've been to the, to, to the land of Dubai. Now, the same thing happens with Iman. Iman, I, if you just say, La ilaha illallah, if you say, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah, fine, you're considered to be in the land of Iman. But you're not really in the land of Iman yet. Unless you get into it further. The further you get into Dubai, for example, or if you visited London, the further you get into London, the more you can say the person is in London or is in Dubai. The same way Iman has a circumference. And when you come to Iman, you come to the outskirts of the circumference. And when you enter, you are now making your, your journey into the depth of Iman until you get to the point of the middle of the circumference. And if that happens, then subhanAllah, you're a true believer. And Allah Azza wa says in this, in this ayah, He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you believe, udukhulu fi silmi kafa. He says, get into Iman. Get, get, sorry, get into this religion fully. In fact, in one part of the Quran, Allah Azza wa says, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, aminu. Now this, this can come across as being confusing. SubhanAllah Allah says, Oh you who believe, Allah says, believe, believe further. Now, how can Allah say, Oh you who believe, okay, this is in ayah number one, uh, 136 of surah number four. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Oh you who believe. Allah then says, believe. He gives us a command, believe. Aminu billah, believe in Allah. Wa rasuli, believe in the messenger. Why would Allah Azza say that? It's because you've got belief, but you need to make it even stronger and you need to make that belief uh, greater. In fact, in another part of the Quran, Allah Azza says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe. Okay, let me just give you the... This is in Surah Hadid, Surah number 57, Ayah number... 28. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, or you believe, ittaqullah, be aware of Allah, be conscious of Allah, wa aminu bi rasooli, and believe in His Messenger. Already Allah said you have Iman, and then He says He wants you to believe in the Messenger. Why? Because believing in Allah means that you better show your actions more and more that you have believed. And that's where the true belief comes. So if you want to now answer the question, why are certain people leaving Islam? It's because their belief wasn't that, that strong. And if it's not strong, then just as the winds come, blow things away, it will blow your iman away as well. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ati'u'ullah wa ati'u'ur rasul. This is, this is the part of iman. Surah number 4, ayah number 59. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey his messenger. In another part of the Quran, in Surah Anfal, Surah number 8, ayah number 24. Allah Azza wa says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul idha da'akum lima yuhiikum. Answer to the call of Allah and His Messenger when they ask you to come to something that is going to make your iman, you know, come alive. Now, why is Allah Azza wa saying this? O you who believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. Because iman is something, once you got the engine, it's supposed to make you believe in Allah and His Messenger. It's supposed to make you come closer. In another part of the Quran, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, ittaqullah, be conscious of Allah, be aware of Allah. Now, hang on a minute. I'm a believer, I believe in Allah. But what is Allah telling me here? Allah is telling me, yes, you do believe in Allah, but I want you to be aware of me more and more. Ittaqullah, be aware. Now, there's, there's two things here. One is, I'm a believer, I believe in Allah. But the second one is that as I'm a believer of Allah, I go in my life and every other moment of my life, I start to be aware that Allah is watching me. 
That is a, that is a second that is a secondary thing. In fact, Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surah um, Ali Imran, um, Surah number three, Allah says, "Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, ittaqullaha haqqa tuqati." Be aware of Allah as He ought to be aware of, as you ought to do this. So this is in Surah Ali Imran, ayah number one zero two. The way you ought to think of Allah and be aware of Allah watching you do this, muslimun, and don't ever come to a state that you are dying or leaving this world, except that you are people, you are those who have submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal. So you can see how all of these ayats tell us that, that we're supposed to connect up with, with Allah Azza wa Jal in this way. Uh, I'm going to spend about another 10 minutes and then I'll, I'll be done. By about half eight, I'll, I'll be finished. Allah says, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan. This is Surah Nur, Surah number 24, Ayah number 21. He says, O you who believe, don't follow the footsteps of the shaytan. Because one of the things is unbelief, but Allah wants to make us aware that you've got an enemy behind your back always. So think, Allah is watching me and I've also got an enemy behind my back to take my iman away. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Surah Hujra, Surah 49, Ayah number 1, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, la tuqaddimu bayna yadayillahi wa rasooli. Don't ever step in front of Allah and His Messenger. Don't ever make your own, you know, judgment about what the religion is without having authority of that from the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe. Now, he, he, he says these ayats, O you who believe, O you who believe again and again, and most of these verses are from the verses of Surah Madi, so from Medina Munawwara, where they were revealed in, in the Medinan period, or after the Hijrah, when the Prophet ﷺ had made the Hijrah to Medina, most of these verses came. Because Allah Azza wa is now telling them that you are not just ordinary people now, you are people who believed, so therefore you need to do what, what I'm telling you to do. So what did Allah say, say for them to do? I'm going to give you a second set of verses. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 153, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, istainu bis sabri wa salah. Seek help by doing prayer and by showing patience. Now Iman, you've got Iman, you've got to link that Iman to pray. So that Iman should urge you to actually pray because you believe, you want Allah, then you pray. Allah says, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum usiyam. Now you should fast. This is an Ayah number... Uh, 183 of Surah Baqarah. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, irka'u wasjudu, bow down to Allah, prostrate in front of Allah, wa'abudu rabbakum and worship your Lord. This is Surah Hajj, Surah number 22, Ayah number 77. Now these are things that Allah has told us with our ibadah, that now your iman should push you to do ibadah. A third thing that Allah says, so one is that He wants us to come into Islam fully. And, be, and, and obey Allah, obey His Messenger, and, and deep, you know, make our belief deeper. Second is Allah is telling us to pray, and to worship, and to fast, and so on and so forth. That is the second thing, to do with ibadah. A third thing Allah Azrael says is, in terms of our, um, our, our vows, our dealings with people, Allah Azza wa Jal says that you have to be those who's, who are honest in, and upright. Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, awfu bil uqood. The contracts you make, fulfill your contracts. Fulfill your obligations. Fulfill the promises that you make. This is Surah Ma'idah, Surah number 5, Ayah number 1. So a believer now is not just belief on its own, it's belief with my worship, yes, which most of the practice in Muslims do, but it has to be belief also with the contracts and the obligations I have. Even with my, fa even with my families and others, I have to do that. In fact, Allah Azrael says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin. This is social Islam. Okay? La yaskhar qawmun min qawmin. Let not one nation mock another nation, no racism. Iman means there's no racism. This is Surah Hujrat, Surah number 49, Ayah number 11. Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save yourselves and save your family members from the fire. This is Surah Tahrim, Surah number 66, Ayah number 6. So Allah is linking Iman with saving my family from, from Jahannam. 
uh, saving my, my society from Jahannam. This is Iman as well. That, that is part of your belief that once you've believed, you've got to do these things. And your Iman should be an engine that makes you do these things. Now, let me, th these are things from our um, sort of social life. Another one from the social life is Surah number 24, Ayah number 27. Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, O you who believe, la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum. Don't enter houses that are not yours unless you do sort of salam, unless you make awareness. All these things came because so socially we're supposed to be those who behave in a certain way. The next one I'm going to give you is to do with number five yes is to do with the akhirah and to do with our um let me just quickly find this to do with our our connection with allah Azza wa Jal. so for example in in surah number 33 ayah number 41 allah says yeah you are ladina amin oh you who believe remember allah a, a good abundant amount, abundance amount of remembrance okay abundant amount of remembrance why because by believing in Allah Azza wa Jal, we're supposed to always be thinking of Allah Allah says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu o you who believe ittaqullah be aware of Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad every soul should start thinking about what it has sent forth for the akhirah for the next life this is surah number 59 ayah number 18 Allah Azza wa Jal says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu those who believe hal adullukum ala tijara should i tell you about a trade a commerce that you can make tunjikum min adabin alim that will save you from a tormenting punishment should i tell you meaning that we should we should do something for the akhirah again this is surah number 61 ayah number 10 so these ayats are telling us to be aware of the akhirah to connect up with allah allah azza has told us ya ayyuhalladhina amanu o you who believe ittaqullah uh, be aware of Allah وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ and also find a means to, to get to Allah. So these are things that connect us with Allah. Another set of verses tell us our Iman. Okay, another set of verses tell us that in our political life, in the things to do with believers and non-believers, we have to be careful in how we have our dealings. So Allah Azza wa Jalla has told us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, la tattakhidu bitanatan min dunikum, la ya'lunakum khabala. This is Surah Ali Imran, Surah 3, Ayah number 118. That, you know, your secret things, your secret affairs of the Muslims should be between the Muslims. You deal with your problems. Don't allow others to come from outside of, of Iman into your problem because they would want different things from it. They, they would want to spoil what is, what is there between you. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. That's where Allah has told us, you know, be careful how you deal with the other communities outside of Islam because they could come and they could spoil what, what is there between the believers. Another part and the final part that I'm going to tell you for today is when Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that by, by acting upon all of this, Allah Azza wa Jal is changing our inside. And he's going to give us nur, he's going to give us light, he's going to make us better people. So, for example, Allah Azza wa Jal says, um, Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 257. Allahu waliyu amanu dhulmati ila nur. Allah is the one who is the guardian of the believers. He takes them out of darkness into light. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that once we have the belief, Allah will automatically take us out from the darknesses into the light and we will be closer to Him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Alam amanu an Has the time not come for the believers that their hearts should become softened towards and to become inclined towards the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal? And there are many verses like this in the Holy Quran. Uh, for example, Allah says, Inna Allah lahadi ladina amanu ila surat al mustaqim. Surah 22, ayah 54. Allah says, He is the one that guides the believers to the straight path. So Allah Azza wa Jal will make all of this happen for us and all of this come you know, true for us when we link our iman to our actions, we see a broader picture. We make sure that we, you know, from last week's one, we, we make sure that the understanding is there. And this week's theme was about Iman, it was about belief. Belief is something which we have is valuable, but belief is something which we have to work on. The more you will repeat the ayats and the ahadith and the evidences and things, it will make us be, you know, go, become people who are believing in Allah deeper and deeper. We should never separate our, 
aqidah, our seerah, our knowledge of Islam from our real iman and our real life. It's all joined together. All of these things should make us be more aware that in every part of my life, I'm supposed to act upon something that is linked to my iman, which will boost my iman. And from the verses that I've given you at the end, it tells us in all our dealings, in all our, you know, in fact, Allah says, Ya ayyu ma baqiya min riba Allah tells us, be aware of Allah, O you who believe. وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الْرِبَا You're supposed to leave riba and usury. This is in Surah Baqarah, uh, towards, I think, towards the end of Surah Baqarah. Why? Because when I practice all of this, then I've made my true connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. So today's uh, theme was about Iman. Inshallah, we'll do another theme next week. Inshallah, I'll see you uh, at 7 o'clock for Isha. Anyone have any questions for today? That we, any questions that you have? Any questions? Going, going. قال سي نيكس ان شاء الله 7 اوكلوك جزاكم الله خير ذكر علم ونور الحاملات سنا ونور والرسمات هنا سرور يا حلوات الكاسن The Safar curriculum covers all the Islamic educational needs of young Muslims today in a fun, simple and engaging way. Tried and tested for over 15 years at one of the UK's leading maktabs, the curriculum has been adopted by hundreds of institutions around the world and makes your child's journey in seeking knowledge easy, meaningful and dynamic. This innovative and comprehensive curriculum covers Qur'an and Tajweed, Islamic studies, du'as and surahs, as well as Arabic in an integrated and structured way. Visit safarpublications.org to find out more.